My name is Joanne Walsh. I'm the Director of Individual Giving at GFN. As someone that spends the majority of their role telling the story of our food banking partners to donors in the broader community, it has just been an absolute inspiration to be able to connect and meet with so many of you. It's my pleasure to introduce our second Food Bank Impact Series. Today's session will focus on how food banks are preparing for and responding to natural disasters. It is my pleasure to welcome to the stage to start this conversation, Hyundai Tibuk, President of TIDA Turkey. Uh, hello, good morning. First of all, I'd like to say that we are very happy to be here to tell you our story. And let me start by just a little in introduction. Uh, Basic Needs Association TIDER was founded in 2010 and aims to prevent waste and reduce poverty. We are extensively working on building our network of food banks all throughout Turkey. Currently, we have 66 food banks in our network in 35 provinces across Turkey. We are a member of Global Food Banking Network since 2017. And uh, with our food banking work, uh, we also provide an employment program for our beneficiaries because we believe that instead of giving out fish, we need to teach the beneficiaries how to fish. So this is a core uh, important work with our program at TIDER. And we aim to help the beneficiaries to get jobs, to apply for jobs and to get recruited so they can live, uh, start to live on their own. We are also a founding member of Afet Platformu. I, this is the Turkish name. I uh, just wanted to write it like that because it kind of became like a brand, uh, which is a disaster platform. It's a platform formed by more than 20 NGOs like TIDER. And uh, we will get to that in a short time now uh, with the detailed work of our emergency response to the earthquakes and natural disaster. Um, so this is a picture of us from London in 2019. Um, we just wanted to tell you again once more how grateful we are for the support of GFN. Uh, it's, it has been really helpful with our net, uh, normal work as well as our emergency response work that we are doing right now. Um, this is a map of Turkey and as you can see, uh, the 35 provinces where 66 food banks in our network are located. Uh, this is the basic uh, sustainable development goals that uh, we are supporting with our work at TIDER, Food Banking Network. And this is just a small, the, the numbers for what we have to, to indicate what we have done so far with TIDER Food Banking Network. Uh, the total number of beneficiaries of TIDAR uh, Food Banking Network is like 900,000 people and the uh, number of people hired by our HR program is 119, which is, I think, is not a good big number and we will be working much more to increase this. Um, this is the active members, this is a list of active members of the NGOs uh, under the disaster platform that work together uh, with, uh, to respond to the emergency relief efforts. Um, so how, how was the platform uh, founded? In 2020, when the earthquake hits Elezi, which is a province in the east part of Turkey, the, the NGOs, TIDER, uh, as TIDER and other NGOs, we got together and we were, okay, we have to do something, what can we do? We all have resources. All these NGOs are working in different areas. You know, TIDER is working on food banking, some are working on health uh, issues, some working on education, some working with women, some working with children or refugees. So, Different parts, uh, different NGOs got together and they combined their resources in 2020 uh, and they set up a warehouse in the disaster area to help the survivors. So we, we worked with the coordination of the local government and Chamber of Commerce. We set up a warehouse and we provided all the supplies that were needed 
to be distributed to the, to the survivors in the, in the disaster area. So we were working like in two groups. One group was in charge of funding and procurement and, and purchasing all the necessary supplies and sending it to the, to the warehouse in the disaster area and one team on the ground. They work in the warehouses with the help of hundreds of volunteers gathered together to, to sort out all the supplies that were sent to put in boxes to be distributed to the surviving families. So after this uh, experience, we decided that, okay, we will be a platform of NGOs who get together after a natural disaster and go to the disaster area and help the government agencies help the surviving victims, survivors, sorry. So as I said, uh, some NGOs are focusing on humanitarian aid, some are focusing on volu volunteer organization, some are focusing on psychosocial support activities because that's also very important. And uh, in the disaster areas, they go and they, they start their support on psychosocial level for the survivors as well as for the health providers because it is really challenging to, to be working in a disaster area, mentally, psychologically, and physically. So our volunteers and our teams who are working on the ground also need psychosocial support, and, and our NGOs and under this platform are providing that. So, uh, in summary, the NGOs with our diverse capabilities, we unite under one umbrella platform to, to give the best uh, response that we can after a, a natural disaster. Um, as you know, Turkey is exposed to natural disasters frequently, floods, wildfires, and earthquakes. But the latest earthquakes that hit south uh, east of Turkey was uh, huge and catastrophic. I mean, the, there are no words to describe this. It, it impacted 10 provinces, uh, 13 million people living in 10 provinces. And, uh, and there was two huge earthquakes in, in just a uh, very short time, and there were always another aftershocks, and there was another one again in Hatay in, in, a, in a very short time. So we did what we did before, we organized, as TIDAR, we had, we contacted our food banks in the, the, in the impacted areas. We had 10 food banks in those cities, so we contacted them. Unfortunately, one did not answer, and it was Hatay. So we, we unfortunately lost the food bank in Hatay, but then we started to work with other food banks. Uh, they, they changed their system of working, you know, they, they became like a warehouse operation to help the survivors. So. We started to procure and purchase, and we knew from past experiences that the basic and urgent needs that, that should be sent over there. So we started to send those things. Uh, teams went on the ground to the field, starting to uh, set up logistic centers and, and warehouses. And as you can see on the map, not only in the impacted areas, but also in the neighboring cities, we set up logistic uh, centers because it was difficult to send supplies from Istanbul to, to, the, to the impacted areas. It would take like 48 hours under the, of course, the weather conditions and of course all the uh, distracted uh, um, road network. So we used Adana, Konya, Kaise, you know, the neighboring uh, cities also to, to procure all the necessary supplies. In the first 72 hours, of course, uh, search and rescue operations were ongoing, so we needed to help the health providers uh, to provide what they need. They need accommodation, they need sleeping bags, tents, they need uh, sanitation uh, and mobile toilets because you can imagine it's a huge area, it's impacted, and there's, there's no uh, a decent place to sleep or you know, to, to, to get your needs. So we were concentrating on uh, supplying uh, what is necessary for, for the health providers and our teams and our volunteers on, on, the, on the ground. And eventually we set up five centers of warehouses, as you can see on the map, and then, uh, through our coordinations, we, o we are always in touch with the, with the people on the ground, and they tell us, they send us a list of necessities they, they need, 
And in the first weeks, it was difficult because everybody's trying to get tents and sleeping bags, containers. Uh, but then there was a shortage of some supplies. Uh, 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 and, you know, you couldn't find a truck, you know, to, to send the supplies in, in the first week. It was really chaotic. But we managed to send um, anything and everything we could find. And this is uh, as TIDAR. TIDAR uh, has uh, provided these uh, supplies, mainly food supplies. Clean water was very important, clothing. Um, and this is as of today. So we are still continuing to supply. Uh, this week, for example, TIDAR volunteers are working in Istanbul uh, to make 10,000 boxes of food and hygiene supplies, which will be sent to the 10 food banks that we have in the impacted areas. And Ramadan is coming. We will be supplying cooked meal for the Ramadan. We have sponsors and donors who wants to have, you know, the uh, soup. There are a lot of soup kitchens in the area as well. We are also supplying um, uh, food supplies for the soup kitchens as well. So here are some pictures. This is uh, the platform members. I, I don't know how many NGO uh, representatives are in this picture, but it's our actual member uh, number of members is 20. But during this, it's like maybe 50 NGOs are working together. And, and you know, whatever one NGO needs something, they ask and, and they provide. It's, it's, a, it's a good collaboration of NGO uh, partnership. Uh, this is Hatay. Um, this is Gaziantep uh, soup kitchen. Uh, this is Adiyaman uh, a food bank, our food bank in Adiyaman. Kahraman Maraş, which was the center of the earthquake. Now, as you can imagine, people are living in tents and containers. Some are uh, living in their own homes. So they didn't want to leave their homes because, okay, it's intact, and they didn't want to leave their stuff. You know, they were they were afraid of you know uh, losing their precious valuables, assets, whatever. So some people are living in their homes, but as you can imagine, life is, has not gone back to normal. So they cannot have access to supplies. They don't have a supermarket in the corner. You know, I mean, they have the money to buy it, but they don't have the, uh, the access. So we have to provide those survivors as well. Uh, there are little villages that nobody uh, reached, but our platform, because we, we receive all the tips, you know, they call us, they reach us. We are using Instagram and our website uh, frequently, which is very good that people can reach us. And every, uh, every request is uh, checked, you know, like, because there's also uh, disinformation as, as well. And we have a hotline where they, say, okay, there's this address, this person, they need this, you know, can you help them? So we check and we try to provide what they need from our warehouses in these five locations. So um, what is next? Next, I mean, this will continue. This has to continue until they have their permanent homes. And there, there's still a lot of things to do. We will continue to supply uh, these areas with, with food and hygiene supplies. Uh, with the soup kitchens, we are working with a with with chef who's, who's working in the area and they are uh, providing 200,000 meals per day. Uh, we will be providing, um, these are the top priority needs uh, that we have to continue to provide. And there's also a problem of migration. Uh, they, it's estimated that 5 million people migrated to other cities. So we will be helping the food banks in those cities as well. We have to do that. And we will be working on other projects. For example, we will build a new food bank in Hatay. We have to do that. I mean, we, we are working with our donors, supporters, that we will set up a new food bank and maybe operate it for a year or two and then hand it over to a local NGO. So um, thank you very much. And I just wanted to end my uh, presentation with this, uh, in the first days and weeks, we received huge amounts of uh, donations uh, in cash and in, in, uh, in items and everything. But of course, as time goes by, people start to forget and the, the, the donations start to decrease. So we really appreciate your support and everything. We have to continue with this uh, work with the donation and your support. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Hyundai. It is now my pleasure to invite to the stage Kenna, the CEO of Red de Elementos Chile. Hello, how is everybody? Great. Again, I want to thank you for inviting us to uh, be at this great conference. To me, it's really great. It's very gratifying to meet again after so many years, after so many things that have happened these last few years. So thank you for the invitation. And what I would like to tell you now is uh, about the response to emergencies uh, we've conducted in Chile. Chile suffers from natural disasters. Pretty often right now we're having wildfires. So we're going to share a little bit about that. Now, before telling you uh, specifics about the emergency, I wanted to give you some numbers. Uh, some of you may not know exactly where Chile is in South America to the left side, the west side. There's a very sliver of a country, a very narrow country. That's Chile. We started our operations in 2010. As I said yesterday, after some changes in tax law, you know, before 2010, what they did was uh, they forced companies or they mandated that companies uh, showed uh, the expenses that we're having with the wasted product, if it was uh, allowed, it was a deduction, if it was rejected, they had more taxes. Now, after the reform in 2010, the companies could continue destroying waste or could deliver it to uh, a nonprofit that attended vulnerable populations. So the tax authorities has a list of all the organizations that received the product. We're certified. All the organizations that receive donated product have to be certified. In 2018, this law was expanded, and it allows the companies to deliver uh, products like hygiene products, sanitary products, uh, et cetera, so non-food products. Now, in 2015, we were rescuing about 3,000 tons a year on average. Last year, we rescued 13,000 tons, a little bit over 1 million kilograms a month. So we're a national bank. It's uh, like the GFN. We have a distribution center in Santiago de Chile, the capital city. So um, also in 2018, we developed a technology platform that allows us to rescue uh, product from the whole country through a digital connection to uh, companies. Companies uh, inform us uh, online what products they have to deliver. We have a georeference model, and we also can calculate the uh, capacity that each entity has. We can match the products available with the products that the entity needs based also on the expiration date. You can see um, of the 13,000 tons last year, we're rescuing 15% through uh, direct uh, pickup in the stores. That's the purple. Now, 2021, after that purple part of the bar, you can see in the graph another segment. Those are the products that we received in donation during the pandemic. That is donation because those were products that were marketable. Uh, but we also purchased product. Now, for the current wildfires we're having, we have received uh, help from GFN and through companies that support GFN, and we've been able to purchase product. And and the uh, pie at the top, just some numbers, uh, we have over 200 companies that uh, support us. We work with over uh, 500 uh, social organizations, about 1,500 centers for distribution in Chile. Uh, we. Uh, have another beautiful project. I hope we can tell you about that. In 2021, we started implementing the uh, social pantries. It's a program that's similar to supermarket, but attending vulnerable populations, in particular uh, senior citizens. So 
we enroll senior citizens in our community, and we deliver weekly the same products that we rescue and we normally deliver through social organizations. Now, with our social pantries, we deliver directly to senior citizens. And we also uh, have a, a whole program of support in those organizations. We have workshops, things like that, to improve the quality of life, the mental health also of senior citizens. I imagine this is something that happens in every country. Um, these are people who are isolated, who cannot uh, climb out of poverty. So this is the support we offer. Going uh, on to the subject of the emergencies specifically, we have a model of response uh, for emergencies. Those last three years, we've had natural disasters, uh, the, of course, the health crisis that the whole world had, political crisis. So we are the first responders, so we can arrive there with the uh, items that they need, uh, uh, plus the food that these populations need. We have uh, connections with the government and with organizations of civil society. So we establish an emergency uh, committee. As a national bank, we have to keep working in our regular operations. We cannot uh, just uh, spend 100% of our time on the emergency. So we have a team working on regular operations. and. Uh, an emergency committee. Uh, these are the uh, stages of the operation uh, with the emergency. So the uh, emergency committee is called, is activated. We uh, review the roles that each one has to fulfill, uh, what, when, and where. And uh, then we uh, identify the emergency. We do we conduct an initial evaluation of needs. We make first contact with our support networks. And we have a, a geographic reference, a georeference of the emergency, see exactly where it is, what organizations we have present in the area, uh, what companies are in that area to provide support. We contact those organizations in the affected area. We uh, make a list of the uh, needs. We uh, survey the number of people affected. And we uh, determine what's uh, a basic emergency kit. And we calculate that, and that's delivered. And we uh, start also uh, collecting resources. You know, as I said, at the beginning of the emergency, you know, there's a lot of help. But as time goes on, people start forgetting. With every emergency, this happens. Uh, after two weeks, it's not on TV anymore. Everybody forgets. And we are left, uh, just, just us, taking care of the emergency. Now, going uh, to the fourth step of the operation, uh, we conduct a review of the stock and inventory. We see what product we have available, the food we have already rescued, plus the ones that we rescue with uh, direct uh, pickup in the stores. Uh, we decide then what to purchase, when to purchase. Obviously, we um, uh, review the budget, make sure we have the monies available. And uh, as I said, we define the purchase. Uh, fifth step, we prepare the product. This is more of the operational aspect, uh, uh, linking with transportation companies uh, normally, we get donated transportation. Sometimes we have to pay for it. At the food bank, we do not have our own vehicles, our own trucks. So we uh, take care of uh, our transportation needs, uh, whether it is with uh, service donations or we lease the trucks. In Chile, we also have a recovery fee paid by these social organizations. Obviously, in emergency cases, we don't collect that for obvious reasons, but we do calculate that uh, recovery fee that's not collected because it's part of the operational costs of the bank. Finally, we deliver the products. We have a list of beneficiaries. We verify that they actually get to the beneficiaries. It's very important to do that because uh, I imagine this happens in other countries. During emergencies, products are collected, warehouse, and three months later, we find warehouses with expired product and items that have not been distributed. So therefore, we take care, we make sure that products reach their destination. The uh, uh, social work uh, team, we have Ms. Bergara, we had other people present here from that team. They're in charge of coordinating all those needs. We have a person from a uh, social assistant uh, social assistant team on the ground verifying the deliveries and uh, of course we uh, 
take care of all the records. Uh, with the current emergency, you can see the uh, map of Chile. Uh, we have the uh, red square around the area affected by the wildfires that started on February the 3rd. At its peak, we had over 300 wildfires. Many of them uh, remain active. We see uh, the uh, fires, the uh, control fires and others, all those dots. Now, the, the team wasn't able to, uh, the, the fire uh, fighting fiends teams weren't able to fight all the fires. Uh, right now, we have over 400,000 hectares affected, 2,500 uh, homes that were destroyed, 1,500 uh, homes uh, affected, almost 18,000 people affected. We had, unfortunately, over 3,600 uh, people injured and 26 people died during these wildfires. On the map, you can see the uh, uh, georeferencing that we do of the uh, fires. Uh, the uh, purple squares show the clusters of uh, assistance where the, where the organizations are, uh, and then the affected areas with the red. Uh, with the yellow circles. So we have a, a way to uh, respond to the emergency faster. So very quickly, we define what the nutritional needs are going to be. We uh, survey that need. We request donations. We purchase food. Uh, we also uh, request transportation. We coordinate the delivery to the affected areas. To this date, we have uh, coordinated about 11 trucks that went from Santiago to the affected areas. And as I say uh, the uh, social assistance team is always there and to conclude there are three regions that were badly affected 24 communities 24 municipalities 60 communities and we have taken care of uh, a lot of people the people who were affected but also the first responders the military the firefighters and the volunteers so we have delivered we have sent 11 trucks all uh, close to 68 tons of food and 26,000 uh, uh, units of uh, non-food products and I'm gonna play for you a video now that we put in social media last week to continue with the uh, the funds uh, collection campaigns it's a very important we get uh, the help we're not under the most favorable economic conditions so uh, receiving help from the food network is very important. Also, uh, we ask all private companies to eh, ahora, even pueden ver de a poco se, se nos estamos levantando. Eh, la ayuda la vamos a seguir necesitando. Por need help for a long time. Everything has been lost. Uh, many people were left with nothing. So we're asking the rest of the companies to do the same that the food bank is doing that the food network is doing uh, thank you very much uh, you can see my email it's uh, in the app uh, you can contact me and uh, something that's very important i said this in the previous presentation the emergency continues and we need to keep up uh, with uh, the help we need to keep this alive so that these people are not forgotten. Uh, there are people who, you know, all their possessions burn down. There's no more wildfires, but uh, their crops are burned, and they're going to need help for a long time. Thank you very much. I think I speak on behalf of everyone that we just want to thank again Hyundai and Kenna for taking the opportunity to come to FBLI. They both are leading teams actively responding to emergencies and we're just incredibly grateful that they came to share their expertise and experience. I'd now like to introduce the leader of our next panel, Danny Flores, who will be taking us through global supply chain.